All right, y'all, this is note card 16. We're going to start to get into some of the derivatives of some trig functions, and particularly the derivatives of sine and cosine. So this is a fairly straightforward note card. Um, there is no packet associated with this note card. There's a front and a back. But before we get that, well, we'll do the first two statements, but I want to show you where it comes from. So... What this means, the first thing, if f of x, oops, sorry, if f of x equals the sine of x, f prime, the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, and if your original function is cosine, the, the derivative of that, so it would be called g prime of x, would be negative sine of x. Now, these are important. You must remember these. So I'm actually going to show you where this comes from. So, let's start with drawing a cosine curve. So let's let, or let's start with a sine curve. Let's let f of x equal sine of x. Okay. So you should remember what a sine curve looks like, but if you don't, just think about the unit circle. Okay. So when, all right, so if we put x here and x is measured in degrees, okay, when we're at zero degrees, okay, remember these points, this is the point uh, one zero. This is the point zero one. This is the point negative one zero and this is the point zero negative one. And remember the sign is like the y value. So when we're at zero degrees, this is zero degrees, the sign value is zero. Okay. When we're at 90 degrees, then the sign value is one. When we're at 180 degrees, the sine value is back to zero. <clears throat> when we're at 270 degrees, we have a sine value of negative one. And when we get back to 360, okay, the sine value is again zero. So a sine curve looks like this. Now, what about negative degrees? Okay, if we just look at a few of them. What about a negative 90, or at negative 180, or at negative 270? Well, negative degrees just means working the other way around. So this is like negative 90, so you're back down to negative 1. Here's negative 180, you're back to zero. Negative 270 is the same as 90, same spot, so you're at positive one. Okay, and negative 360, you'd be back to zero. Okay, so here's what at least a couple cycles would look like on a sine curve. Okay, and it oscillates, it repeats itself. And if you went out further, it would kind of do that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's think about what f prime would equal, and I'm going to do that in green here. I want to make a graph of f prime. Remember, derivative means slope of a tangent line. So if I think about a tangent line right there at 90 degrees, the tangent line is horizontal. And what's the slope of that tangent line? It would be zero. <clears throat> okay. If I think about at zero degrees, if I draw on the tangent line, that actually has a slope of one. So if I plot that on the same axis, it's one. If I think about at 180 degrees, the tangent line, if I draw on a tangent line, that has a slope of negative one. If I plot it on the same axis, then I would put negative one. So what I'm doing here is I'm plotting the derivative values. 
At 270, if I draw on the tangent line to the original curve, it would have a slope of zero, and I could plot that. At 360, it has a slope of one, so I could plot that. Here, it has a slope of zero, if I plot that on the same axis. Okay, here it has a slope of negative one. Here it has a slope of zero. So if I were to connect all these points, what would happen here is the derivative, actually I'll do that in red so it's a little bit easier to see. If I were to plot all the derivative values, what, and if I did it for multiple numbers even in between there, we would get a derivative graph that looks like that. So the question is, what does that derivative graph look like in red? Well, it looks like a cosine curve. That's why the derivative <coughs> of f of, of sine of x is cosine of x. And you can do exactly the same thing for a cosine curve. If I just make a cosine curve here, okay, using kind of the same same numbers here, 90, 180, 270, 360, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. Okay. Well, if you think about it here, one, there's negative one. All right, cosine curve, the cosine of zero degrees is one. The cosine of 90 is zero. The cosine of 180 is negative one. Cosine of 270 is zero. Cosine of 360 is back to one. Cosine of negative 90 is zero. Cosine of negative 180 is negative one. Cosine of negative 270 is zero. So here's my regular cosine curve. Okay, so if g of x equals cosine, that's the red curve. Think about the slopes here of this one. <clears throat> here the slope is zero. Here the slope is negative one. Here the slope is zero. Here the slope is positive one. Here the slope would be zero if I kept going. Okay. Over here, that slope is negative one. Or I'm sorry, it's positive one. Sorry about that. It's going up. Here the slope is zero. And here the slope would be negative one. So if I were to connect these black dots, you get this graph in black. Now, this black graph kind of looks like the blue graph, except it looks flipped over the x-axis. So it's not quite a sine graph, it's a sine graph that's been flipped over. Whenever you flip something over the x-axis, you have to put a negative in front of it. All right, so that's where we actually get <coughs> these two <coughs> um, derivative functions. That's how we know uh, the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So let's go ahead and work through some of these problems. These aren't too bad, <clears throat> okay? So here it says if f of x equals sine of x, then what's the derivative value evaluated at pi over three radians? <clears throat> okay. So the first thing before we can find f prime of pi over three, we have to find f prime of x. So if the original function is sine, what's the derivative? It's cosine. So to figure out what f prime of pi over 3 is, then we just plug in pi over 3 where we see the x. <clears throat> now, you have to know this without a calculator. Pi radians is like 180 degrees. Okay, So this is like saying cosine of 180 degrees divided by 3, which is really like saying cosine of 60 degrees. If you use your fingers, you pull back your 60 degree finger and I got one finger to the left, my thumb. All right, so therefore, the right answer is there, the one finger gets to me the one, so it's one half. 
All right, you should be able to know that from your unit circle. So my final answer there is one half. Okay, now let's do number two. Now, can we rewrite g of x here? One over x squared, I can write that as x to the negative second power, plus five times the cosine of x. So to find the derivative, okay, we gotta apply the power rule here. The negative two comes out front. We reduce the power by one, so it goes from negative two to negative three. That takes care of the first term derivative. Now what about the second term? You've got a coefficient, it stays. So to find the derivative, it's gonna be five times the derivative of whatever cosine is. What's the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine. So I do negative sine of x. <clears throat> so I can simplify that, I can write it a little bit nicer. Negative two over x cubed. And five times negative sine, this is like saying negative one sine, so five times negative one is negative five sine of x. And that could be an acceptable answer. <clears throat> or you could get a common denominator if you really want. <clears throat> okay, now what are they asking me to do in number three? They tell me what the function is. Oops, it includes the minus pi. It's asking me what is this thing? So what that thing represents is actually called the second derivative. All right. All right, so what would the first derivative be? Let's first find that. Negative four times, what's the derivative of cosine? Remember, coefficients stay. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, or negative one sine. All right. Now, pi is just a number. Pi is 3.4. One, four. So what's the derivative of 3.14? What's the derivative of constant? Hopefully you say it's zero. Okay. And we don't even need to include that. So I can rewrite this as, well, negative four times negative one is positive four. So the first derivative is four sine of x. <clears throat> but it's not asking me for the first derivative. It's asking me for the second derivative. Now, another way you can write the second derivative instead of d squared y over dx squared, you can just say f double prime, two primes. It means the same thing. So how are you gonna find the second derivative? You're gonna take the derivative of the first derivative. So you got a coefficient four times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So my final answer here is four cosine of x. <clears throat> okay, number four. Find the equation of the line tangent at the point zero one. Well, that, that's kind of nice because they gave me the x value and the y value. So I already know the point, now I just need to find the slope. So how am I gonna find the slope? I'm gonna take the derivative and evaluate it at that x value. So I need to find y prime at zero. Well, before I can find y prime at zero, I need to find just y prime. So how am I gonna find the derivative of this thing? What's the derivative of one x? Well, that's like one x to the first. One times one is one. That would go down to x to the zero -th but we know x to the zero with is just one itself. One times one is still one. And what's the derivative of cosine? Okay, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine. <clears throat> okay, so therefore y prime of x would just equal one minus the sine of x. But I need to find y prime at zero. So, y prime evaluated at zero would be one minus the sine at zero. All right. And what is the sine of zero radians, which also means zero degrees? Well, hopefully you say, well, that's zero. So therefore the slope is equal to one. 
Once you know that information, you can write the equation of the tangent line. y minus the y value, 1, equals the slope, x minus the x value. Okay, so that's an acceptable answer. Or if you move things back around, y equals 1x plus 1. If you change it to slope-intercept form, point-slope form is fine. If you, they don't specify. Either one of these answers is correct. <clears throat> so we're just doing the same things we were doing before, but now we're doing it with trig functions, some trig functions. Okay. It says for y of t equals this, find y prime of 3 and verify with your calculator. So before we can find y prime of 3, we first have to find y prime for all of t. So what's the derivative of this first term? 16 times 2 is 32. Reduce the power by 1. What's the derivative of negative 3t? Well, it's just minus 3. Okay, what's the derivative of a constant? 0. Don't even have to write it in. Now to evaluate it at 3, Everywhere I see a t, I'm just going to plug in 3. 96 minus 3, to me that looks like 93. Now, I'm going to actually show you two ways to do this. There's more than just one way. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the straightforward way. Plug in the ori original function, 16t squared, but we have to use x's instead. No big deal. Just do a zoom standard. <clears throat> so some parabola. Then go second, calculate, option six, calculate the derivative at a point. What point do we care about? At an x value of three. And there we go, right there. dy dx equals 93. So that's the tangent line slope there. There's another way to do it. <clears throat> I want you to watch this real quick. If you go to math, go down here to option eight. What do you notice? Some Leibniz notation pops up. So it says, okay, let's take the derivative with respect to x, take the derivative of what, whatever's in y1, but I want to know what it equals for all of x. So I'm basically putting an x there, an x here, and I'm putting y1 there. If I hit graph now, what I just drew in there, or what the calculator just drew, is actually the derivative function. Let me... Just turn off y1 real quick so you can see this a little bit more clear. <clears throat> so what is that derivative function? It's this thing right here, 32t minus 3. The way I can verify it, that I got the correct derivative function, put in 32t minus 3, but use x instead. Maybe do that in red. And hit graph. If I got the correct derivative function, okay, both the blue line and the red line should be on top of each other. So there's the calculator showing me what the derivative function is. And what do you notice? The red line went right on top. So I have the correct derivative function. I didn't have to do that, so I'm just going to clear that. But once I have the derivative function in there, I'm just going to let it graph again. Okay. 
If I hit trace now, oh, I'm still working, sorry. If I hit trace now, and I actually type in the value three, you'll notice that it gives me the Y value, the 93 here. Okay, so there's more, more than just one way to do it. Now, did you have to graph that to check it? No, you could have actually done this from your home screen. If I went math, went down to number eight, which stands for numerical derivative. Okay, it gives me the same thing. So I can say, okay, calculator, take the derivative, take the derivative of what, of whatever's in y1, or I could have typed it out. Okay, let me actually type it out this time. So 16, I'll get rid of y1 entirely, so I don't have that option. Okay, 16 x squared minus 3t plus 4. But if I just want to evaluate it at a certain point, like x equals 3, it's going to come out and it's going to tell me what the derivative value is there. So I'm telling the calculator, take the derivative of this, and then once you find the derivative, plug in num the, a number of, of 3. And my calculator will give me an estimate for the derivative value. <clears throat> So let's do the next problem here. It says find the derivative for that crazy looking function, and then find the slope at x equals negative one. In other words, find f prime of negative one. And verify with your calculator, okay? So let me rewrite f of x in a little bit nicer way. So I'm gonna call that six fifths. I'm gonna move the x squared to the numerator by doing that, okay? plus four x to the two thirds. Now I don't really need to change this because the square root of 17 is still just gonna be a number. Now let's find the derivative. Six times negative two is negative 12, so it'll be negative 12 fifths x to the negative third. Okay, four times two thirds becomes eight thirds. Subtract one from two thirds, and that's negative one third. Then the derivative of a constant is just zero, so we don't even have to include that. If I want to write it a little bit nicer, I could write this as negative 12 over five x cubed plus eight over three x to the positive one third. Or I can write it like this negative 12 over 5x cubed plus 8 over 3 times the cube root of x. Now let's find f prime evaluated at negative 1. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in negative 1. And then I'm going to simplify. Okay, so negative 12 over negative 1 cubed is still negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. The cube root of negative 1 is also negative 1. Okay, so I get 12 fifths. And then 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, so this would really turn into a minus 8 thirds. Get a common denominator, so multiply that by 5, multiply that by 5, multiply this by 3, multiply that by 3. 3 times 12 is 36, so 36 over 15 minus 8 times 5 is 40, 3 times 5 is 15. 36 fifteenths minus 40 fifteenths is negative 4 fifteenths. <coughs> That's my answer. Now let's verify it with the calculator. So math number nine, or math number eight, excuse me. Let's put in the function six over five x squared plus four x raised to the two-thirds 
minus the square root of 17. And I'm going to evaluate that at negative 1. It's going to give me that answer. What did I think the answer was? Negative 4 15. So remember when the calculator does this, it just gives you an approximation. What do you notice about those two answers? They're about the same. So the calculator's answer is the same answer that I got out to like five or six decimal places. So I feel pretty good that that's the right answer. <clears throat> I'm going to do the next problem on paper. So I'm starting to run out of some room. So here's what I start with. It tells me that h of x, some function, is 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 over the cube root of x. And it's asking me to find h. Well, there's a mistake on our note card. It's asking me to find h prime of negative 8. So I want to find h prime. So let's just rewrite the function. Okay. Use green again. So I can rewrite this as 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 over x to the 1 -third power. And what can I do now? I can take each term in the numerator. and divide it by x to the one-third. Because all I'm doing is doing the reverse process of combining um, fractions with a like denominator. So once I do that, then it shouldn't be too hard. So like for instance, if you have x to the a over x to the b, you know that's just going to be the same thing as x raised to a minus b. So let me just write this a little bit differently. Instead of writing x squared, well, what is squared? 2. Isn't 2 equal to 6 thirds? Why do I write it like that? So it would be easier to subtract. Okay. Look at the next term. This is 5x to the first. And what is 1? One? 1's equal to 3 thirds. Okay. And here, for this last term, this is going to be fairly easier. Just to, I can just move that up there by turning it into a negative exponent. Mm. So I haven't taken any derivatives yet. I'm just simplifying h of x. So we have a 3 over an understood 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. And all we have to do here is subtract the powers. So 6 thirds minus 1 third is 5 thirds. 5 divided by an understood 1 is 5. 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And our last term is already done. So this is what, this is a simpler way to write h of x. But my real goal here is to find h prime at negative 8. Before I can find h prime at negative 8, I first have to find h prime of x. So I'm going to use my rules. 3 times 5 is 15, divided by 3 is 5. Okay, so we'll have 5x. Make this go down by a power. So 5 thirds minus 1, which is 3 thirds. 5 thirds minus 3 thirds is 2 thirds. <clears throat> negative 5 times 2 thirds is negative 10 thirds. Make that go down by a power. So it'll be x to the negative one third. Two times negative one third is negative two thirds. Make that go down by a power, so we're down to negative four thirds. Now that's not a very easy, it's not written in a nice way. So I might want to write that as five times the cube root of x squared minus 10 over three and then when we move this down to the denominator, it would be x to the one-third, positive one-third, which I could also write as the cube root of x, minus 
2 over 3, again, I can move that to the denominator and it would be positive 4 thirds. But instead of writing positive 4 thirds, I can write this. So this is a nicer way to write the derivative equation. <clears throat> now we're not done yet. They're asking me to evaluate it at negative 8. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a negative 8. about simplifying. So if I want to think about this, <clears throat> I can actually do this. I see a squared here, and I know that there is a cube root of negative 8. I can move that squared outside like that. That'll make life easier. Minus 10 over 3 times the cube root of negative 8. <clears throat> Minus 2 over 3 times the cube root of negative 8. We can take that first and then raise that to the fourth. Okay. We'll see what happens. What is the cube root of negative 8? What times itself times itself again would give me negative 8? Well, that's negative 2. We just said the cube root of negative 8 was negative 2. turns into something like that. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20. Three times negative 2 is negative 6. I see two negatives next to each other, so I can turn those into positives. All right, minus 2 over 3 times Negative 2 to the 4th is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. It's positive 16. Okay. We can do some simplifying some more. So 20 plus, you can reduce that, times 5 over 3. You can reduce this, 2 over 16 to 1 over 8. Okay. So it becomes minus 1 over 3 times 8 is 24. And then you can get a denominator, common denominator. So that denominator is 1. You can turn them all into 24 so by multiplying that by 24. How do I get this into 24? Multiply it times 8. Okay. So what's that? That's 480 over 24 plus 40 over 24 minus 1 over 24. All common denominator, 40 plus 40 is 520 minus 1 is 519. So 519 over 24 is the right answer. Very, very long problem. But you, as you can see here, I didn't use the calculator. I just did one step at a time. Let's check ourselves. I'm going to hit math 9. Oops, wrong one. Math 8. DDX. I'm going to type it in just as it's written in the original problem. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 over the cube root of x. And I'm going to evaluate that at negative 8. So the calculator tells me that's the answer. I think the answer is 519 over 24, so I can check to see what that decimal is. And it's really, really close to the calculator approximation. This is almost 21.625. This is the exact answer, 21.625. So what does that mean? It means my answer is correct. And a lot of these guys, they're just review. Even though this is sine, cosine, 
all these note cards are on, on a lot of these note cards, we just build review into them. So hopefully you'll be okay with that. So the next problem, second derivative. So let's rewrite just the function. So that's negative five over, let's turn this into a fractional exponent. So that's x to the two fifths power, which I can also write as negative five x to the negative two fifths power. So this is the function, I have not taken any derivatives yet. First derivative. Okay. I'm going to take the negative 5 times negative 2, which is 10, over that 5. And I'm going to reduce this by 1. So I'm going to subtract 1. So if I subtract 1, that's like 5 fifths. So if I subtract 5 fifths, I'm down to negative 7 fifths. Now, if you want to make life a little bit easier, you can. You don't have to, but 10 over 5 it's just going to be 2. So this is 2x to the negative 7 fifths. That's the first derivative. Now you can rewrite it if you want, but there's really no point because we have to take another derivative. You know, that's like 2 over 1. So if I go one more derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of this. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. 1 times 5 is 5. I need to make this go down by another power of 1, so I'm going to subtract another uh, 5 fifths, so I'm down to negative 12 fifths. So this is the answer, not in a very nice way. If you wanted to rewrite it a different way, we could write this as negative 14 over 5 times the fifth root of x to the 12th. That number is the index, that number is inside. And I moved it down to the denominator to make it a positive power. You guys should be feeling better and better about this. <clears throat> and the last problem here, find the second derivative, no big deal. Let me rewrite y. Let me write it as 5 6 x to the 4 minus 2x to the negative 3 plus pi x minus 9. That's the function. Now let's take the first derivative. 5 6 times 4 is basically just, this is like 4 over 1, right? 5 times 4 is 20. 6 times 1 is 6. So this is 20 over 6. Okay. Make the power go down by 1. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Make the power go down by 1. Okay. Pi is just a number. Think about it like 3.14. 3.14 times 1 is still 3.14. You're going to make that go down a power. Derivative of a constant is 0. Don't need that. X to the 0 is just 1, so I don't need that. Now, if we wanted to make this a little bit nicer, I can reduce 20 over 6. That's the same thing as 10 over 3. Okay, so that's a nicer way. Sorry, I forgot the pi. So this was the original function. This is the first derivative. Now I've got to take one more. I need to find y double prime because it's the second derivative. So here, when I take 10 thirds times 3, this is like 3 over 1, basically the 3's are going to cancel. So you're just going to be left with 10. Reduce the power by 1. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. Reduce the power by 1. Now here, we have a pi, which again is 3.14. What's the derivative of a constant now? It's 0. So that part goes away. And we can write this a little bit nicer as 10x squared minus 24 over a positive x to the fifth, or over x to a positive pi. So this is an acceptable answer. I mean, this is acceptable too, just if it's multiple choice, you will not see it like that. Or 
they could have chosen to get a common denominator. I could have multiplied this thing by x to the fifth over another x to the fifth. So you could say 10x to the seventh minus 24 all over x to the fifth. So that could be an acceptable answer as well if they got a common denominator. And if you think about why that works, x to the seventh over x to the fifth becomes x squared. So that's the uh, note card. Like I said, there's a, you just double check. Yep. There is no packet with this. So hopefully uh, you got what you needed out of this note card. And thanks for watching.